Beautiful people. Episode 75 of From Everyone. I'm here learning from Frankie Forbes today. My man, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate it. Let's get this right up to you. Yeah, gotcha. nothing is close enough. So yeah, feel free to Fair. move it as close to you and get uncomfortably close with the microphone today. <laughs> uh, we're here. Yes, a couple quick plugs for me before we get into the show. Uh, one, I'm just about full up for music videos for 2024. So if anyone's booking, uh, I might be able to get one more in before the end of the year, but otherwise we're into 2025. So Thank you to everyone who's made this year so busy and successful. Uh, hopefully next year is even better. Uh, I just put out a music video that I did with Within the Ruins. Uh, I did some VFX oh, for them. Uh, so it was directed by Chris Klump, and he reached out to me to do some VFX. And that just came out. Uh, and then by the time this episode airs, there will be music videos for No I Has Seen and Chain Twist that are either live or just about to be live. So that's my quick little plugs. Frankie. Last year, you put out an EP in 2023 called Carved. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. I know it was a three-song EP, three-song single. What do you call it? Uh... Three song single. Three yeah. song single. Yeah. Hell yes. Okay. That came out last year. It is streaming everywhere. Go stream that shit. Uh, and Frankie, you are being hired for fill-ins, co-writes, uh, anything. Yes. What are people hiring you for? What, what would you like people to hire you for? A lot of studio time. Hell yes. Okay. Yeah. I love doing studio work, arguably more than live shows. I, I like live shows because a lot of adrenaline, lots of uh, you know <clears throat> crowd interaction. But I feel like in the studio, especially with the stuff I do with Sean... Yeah. Um, it's just so much more creative sure. to do things with him. Like I know with a lot of the uh, new stuff I'm working on with my solo, we were like bringing shovels inside the studio, banging them against the wall. I and love like that. Taking dirt. We even went over to his chicken coop and like tried to see if we can get <laughs> weird noises from his chickens. Um, R.I.P. those chickens. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go there, there's one less chicken and one more story about how a coyote got into yeah. the chicken coop. So yeah. shout out those guys. They were beautiful kings while they lasted. I think we're down to one or two chickens, but yeah. they're beautiful. But yes, I um, love the idea of like almost like Foley is like the mu- movie term of that. Like, yeah, going out and finding organic yeah. sound effects and making it happen. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them will take from uh, like an effect website. Sure. That, like we'll look up one of them. We found like a guy moaning, and it was really weird sounding. But I won't then, ask what that website was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, we took it and we had to like edit it, and it sounded like a some sort of ghostly, yep. um, like noise in the background. But it's pretty cool. That's- so that's that's why I like tend to prefer more studio stuff because it's a little more laid back and a lot more room for experimenting with just noises. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. It, almost, I, it sounds like you're really into like the production side of stuff. And I, I resonate <laughs> with you that like going out and making these sounds that like you mentioned, that, yeah, it's a guy moaning that becomes a ghost or something. And I yeah. love doing the same thing in music <laughs> videos. Uh, I'll find stock footage of an event. Yeah. It's really fun to take this thing of like, if you knew what this was, you wouldn't like it. But once it goes through the chain of stuff that I'm going to put it through, yeah. it's going to be sick in the end. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, especially the song Undead. That was probably the most creative we've gotten on one that's released so far because um, I really wanted to do a throwback to the old Night of the Living Dead movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge fan of all all old, like, scary movies. Yeah. I don't like new ones um, just because they're not as fun. I like outlandish things. Okay. Serious things are cool. When does old end and new start? Like what year ish? It is depends because there's certain movies like Trick or Treat, okay. which um, it's a newer movie, but it's a lot of old style things happening okay. throughout everything. But um, in that uh, zombie broadcast, that's actually me going in the sound booth, plugging my nose and trying to do like the <laughs> most, uh, you know whitest news anchor yep. 50s voice whatever yeah. and sean just pitch shifted it hell yeah um so, so yeah it's things like that i just love being uh doing weird things uh even though i'm primarily a drummer yeah <laughs> hell yes uh that just triggered a very niche story that I actually i i find I, pre- I repeat myself on here very often to some degree it's, it's been 75 episodes so there's 75 hours of me yeah. sitting here talking about very <laughs> similar things but there's only yeah. so many stories i have but you my friend triggered one that i don't think i've told on here yet uh and i'm 50-50 on whether I should, but I guess at this point I'm now in too deep. Uh, I was in the studio uh, with a band, and I was doing content for them. And they needed, like, a like a talking part. And the talking part wasn't like they needed words. It was, to your point, they just needed, like, a human cadence to then go and fuck up and do other stuff with. Mm-hmm. So they put me in the booth, and they say, hey, go in the booth. Like, say whatever you want. Uh, and, of course, my brain doesn't work that well. So I immediately start saying the worst things that I could possibly <laughs> think of. Uh, and so we were on tour. And so I go, oh, I hope the bus breaks down. I hope everything falls apart. I hope we all get stuck here. 
Well, yeah. I fly home from there. They go two weeks more of traveling. They're out in Arizona and they have an accident. Uh, and so they're pulling into a hotel and there's like an overhead thing hanging down. And so one guy in the yeah. band is like, hey, everyone, watch out for that thing. Like it will hit our roof. Like we have to go around it. Yeah. The next morning they're getting up. That guy who warned everyone else is in the driver's seat and goes right under the over ledge. It just takes like a top foot of their van so off. So you like, like jinxed fuck, it. Jinxed the hell out of it. I felt so bad. But it was yeah. like, you guys gave me the green light. You said say anything. I didn't yeah. I didn't think this was one of the outcomes that could happen here. So it was. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And I'm grateful I wasn't stranded with them. But it certainly yeah made their life yeah. very difficult and very expensive and i felt awful of course not at all related but yeah it was one of those like god damn why could i say anything <laughs> else like they, they yeah. said say anything why did i have to go there i could have said yeah. anything that wasn't real wasn't relevant wasn't related and life would have been fine but uh and of course yeah in the ep the vocal line is there we don't hear anything i say it just like became like a murmur of yeah. sorts so it's not at all relevant. I literally could have just said, my name is Peter. I have a dog. I don't even have a dog. But yeah. like, I could have just gone down that road. But you went with that. No, I went with the yeah. bus crashed. And certainly <laughs> two weeks later, that's exactly what that's happened. That's rough. So that was brutal. But life goes on. It sounds like it wasn't quite as successful and fun as your <laughs> DIY vocal yeah. sessions. But I like the idea of you different. guys going out to the chicken coop, getting the hammer in there, or the yeah. shovel, rather. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, it sounds like a very fun, like, organic studio process that seems yeah. conducive to making good art on the backside of it. Yeah, especially because... Um, we normally, when I go in, I do it kind of reverse because I'm the drummer. Mm -hmm. I have a rough idea for what I want everything else to sound like. Sure. Generally, you go in and the drums are laid down first. <clears throat> um, I don't do that. And I also am not good at playing other instruments. So I'm just sitting there like a moron, just making noises like do, 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 do. do. Mm -hmm. And I'm tapping and Sean looks at me like, what do you <laughs> want me to do? <laughs> and then... Um, Sean eventually, uh, on those songs, just ripped these amazing guitar parts that were like guided by me, but you know, I can't take too much credit for that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, th with the new stuff, I actually got Jake Miller. Um, what a king dude. There's no one better. Easily yeah. the craziest guitar player I've ever sat down with. Hell yes. Like I sent him some of the ideas that Sean roughly put down and, um, the first day I had him in the studio was for one of my newer songs and he did something close enough, but drastically different. And I'm like, there, it's a good thing I got this guy because he's yeah. making the project way sicker than it would have been. <laughs> he is yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, he has a funny story that he told in here being in the studio with Chris Wiseman and they go into a yeah. part and Wiseman writes a part that is not play or someone mm -hmm. wrote, a part, I don't know if it was Wiseman, someone wrote a part that was unplayable and Jake goes, I can't play that. And Wiseman goes, You'll learn. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that is yeah, Jake. There it's is like, no unplayable not part Not to for him. him. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. I it, To me, it was so in insightful of like, Wiseman is such an expert. Like, he is so yeah. great at what he does that for him to go, oh, you'll learn. It's such a mm -hmm. tremendous, like, boat of confidence of like, yeah. I know you don't believe in you, but you're better than even you believe. So yeah. no worries, King. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And they did. Uh, and I think that's the intro to Moonglade, which is one of the videos we just came oh, out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm forgetting which song it was, but I believe it was the intro to Moonglade. But yeah. neither here nor there. Hell yes. Uh, the idea of being a drummer going into this is a really fascinating one of like, yeah, you're right. You're, you know, what is viewed as like the baseline of most songs and the rest mm -hmm. of the song that people that I consume, right? Like when I, when I hear a song, I'm really hearing vocals and then like everything yeah. that's not vocals. Mm -hmm. And then I'm hearing a little guitar. And by the time I'm hearing drums, it's like, I am actively trying to hear the drums, <laughs> yeah. which is of course, because I am musically ignorant and not a musician to that capacity. But yeah. I think that is a fair representation of how most, most consumers of music listen to music. It's like yeah. they listen to the, the, the lyrics and then vocals, guitar, and then eventually, if you listen to the song enough, you'll start yeah. hearing drums. For you to go in and write from that reverse order, yeah, it's a really fascinating challenge. Yeah, I think it came about because um, before I started doing my solo stuff, I always had an idea of what I wanted, and um, I would just kind of sit in my you know basement playing these mm -hmm. things, and I'm picturing all the other instruments behind me. So before I can finalize what I want to do on drums, I have to get what I was picturing in my brain first. Yeah. And uh, with the newer stuff, Sean and I have, uh, well, more Sean. I just kind of tap and make noises. But um, he had to program a lot of the parts before because I can't play them yet because it's just one of those things that I have it in my head. I know what I want to do. I can't do it yet, but I will. So sure. I need a reference to push myself to yep. do it. That's yeah. such a bizarre, I guess I do the same thing in video, but it's such a bizarre thing we do to ourselves. Of like, yeah. we should just stay within the things we know we can make. Where it's yeah. so often that I write a treatment going, 
I can do this. I yeah. haven't quite done it yet, and I've done the three steps required. I just haven't tied them all together and tried to do this. Yeah, do this whole yeah. sequence. And it's the same thing with drums. Of like, you can play the thirty second notes at two hundred BPM or whatever the fuck the thing is. Yeah, you know you can play the part after it. That's fill after it. Mm-hmm. It's just combining those two things and then doing it in the context of a whole song that suddenly becomes like, oh fuck. So yeah. why, don't, why don't we just stay, scale back a little bit? And yeah, <laughs> there's a. It's a nice balance of pushing yourself Mm -hmm. and doing things that you normally wouldn't do. Yeah. But then uh, taking a step back, like Sean sat me down. He's like, these ideas are cool, but you're just not a guitar player. He's Mm -hmm. like, you should hit up Jake. Um, You know, I think he'd be down with this project and he is. And I'm super pumped because like I said, he's making everything else sound a million times better Mm -hmm. on this, but it takes some uh, humility uh, looking at it, and even though it's your project, you have to go. If I want this to be what I know it can be, mm-hmm. I have to acknowledge I'm not great at this aspect. It's okay to ask for help. You're still guiding it; it's still your baby. Yep. But um, you know, just stick with your strengths. Yep. Improve on your weaknesses. That is yeah. such a sound advice, <laughs> and I wish I was better at taking it. <laughs> Where I feel like I'm yeah. just now getting better at being like, okay. This whole project, I I think I really love the ownership of a project. I think that is part of what I love about music videos is like I get to be in the driver's seat for this whole thing. And like we can debate whether the the music video I put out, we can debate whether it's good or bad. We can debate if you like it or if it could have been better or whatever. But like to me, there is inarguable that it is unique. That is the only one in all of time, right? Mm -hmm. For these four people who are in the video, for myself, for all of our lives to align, for all of our creative juices to align, like Mm – even if we tried to recreate a Nirvana music video, like we literally couldn't. Like there is yeah. a there is a, a uniqueness of time that is incalculable, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, I get and so to me, it's like that is the fun of the music video is that I get to be yeah part of this very unique recipe. And I've started to recently be like, I like being this unique recipe. But if I can bring in other flavors, yeah, this thing gets even cooler. And that yeah, yeah forces me to take my hands off a little bit, which is so scary. Of like I've made a living off of keeping my hands as close to the thing as possible. And now yeah. it's like what if we invite someone else in? And yeah, to your point, I just had a project where we invited another animator to work on something. And it was one of those, like, I think I could learn how to do that thing, but it's either I take a month and learn how to do this, or I give it to an expert who can get it done in three or four days for me because they've done it a bunch of times. Yeah. And learning to trust that delegation process has been a really scary thing. And it sounds like the same stress you went through. Yeah. And it's, it's actually what you said about having other people come in. That's, actually been super helpful as well unintentionally Mm -hmm. like jason will come and hang out in the studio and one of the songs he's like put a beat down (laughs) at the end i'm like that's actually a cool idea he's like i was kidding don't don't do that and i'm like no that's gonna sound cool and i think it sounds cool hell yes um but yeah it's just like little input whether it's you know just people saying stuff in the moment we're actually super invested like hey you should try this that's super beneficial. Yep. And a lot of people don't realize, or well, I never realized, that's what a lot of big names do. Of course. They go in a room and there's like 20 people there. Whereas me with the <clears throat> a little bit of pride in there, it's like, I want to sit down and do the whole thing myself. But it's like, these people are just there to help you take their advice. Yes. Like Sean's the biggest, uh, you know, help, um, you know, musically that I've had within the last, you know, three years. Cause he'll, I'll come up with an idea and he'll go, yo, that sounds stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> and, um, that's honesty. It's helpful. And then, you know, we just kind of brainstorm and then he guides certain things. I guide certain things, what I can't do that he does. Mm-hmm. It's great. I, I like working with people, even though it is a solo project. Sure. I think yeah. it's also a testament <clears throat> to your willingness to like take feedback and take in good ideas. And I think it shows in like the, the product feels very diverse. Like it feels like you're someone who's willing to take chances and try stuff and like mix new elements and combine stuff. And I think that's like a, yeah, a really rare thing. I think in the context of music and the context of art, like we want so yeah. badly to like predetermine what this thing will be and then make that happen. It's like, no, no, yeah. no. The best, the best version of this thing is sitting in the pocket with it and going, what if? Yeah. And following those <laughs> leads. And then sometimes you follow them to a dead end. Yeah. Sometimes you follow them and find a little side street <laughs> off of it that you never yeah. would have gotten to. But it's like it has to start with this like willingness and openness to say what if. And I think a lot of people yeah. don't succeed in that too often. Yeah. Well, my mindset is if I want to know if people will like it, I have to get their honest feedback. Because what better time to do that than right here when you're making it? Yep. Because if you put it out and you're like, oh, this is sick. And then other people look at it and they cringe and you're sitting there like, oh. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, but also the people that are in there. Number one, you're hiring them for a reason. Yep. Number two, 
they're they're friends. They want you to succeed, and yeah. their name's going to be attached to it regardless. So it's got to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if they tell you something stupid, you can't take it to heart because yep. it it's genuinely might be a stupid idea. Is there, uh, you just build off it. Is there an idea that you got attached to that didn't make it to the record? Like, has there been a time where you were like, this is the thing, and everyone else in the room was like, no, 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 it's not the thing, and you had to, like, come off that ledge yeah. and try and come to terms with it? I think there was one, and I can't remember, just because we've messed around with so many sure. different um, things. I know there was one time <clears throat> that I went in and just made, like uh, – groaning noises <laughs> in the sound booth okay. and then listening back to it, you know, Sean, Sean would, uh, poke fun at it. Cause it, it, you know, unedited, it's supposed to sound like a deep monster type sure, thing. Sure. And, uh, unedited is just me going, <laughs> ah, and, uh, I recently listened to it. The last mix he sent me, I'm like, take it out. <laughs> don't, don't, let's, you can't you know, it anymore. it's like, you know, cause it fits the, the song, this one's a bit unique because it kind of goes with a story of an old movie. I don't want to give too much away. Please, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I'm like, I think they can grasp it without me just, you know, moaning every <laughs> five minutes of the song. It just sounds weird no matter how well it's mixed. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair, though. Yeah. I, I think I have trouble with that when I get my head set on something. It's like I, I just try and shoehorn the thing in. Yeah. And it's like, no, at some point you have to learn to cut ties, and that is part of, yeah, part of creating. It's not that, like, yeah. not every idea can work out, and that's part of why we yeah. take chances and, yeah, part of the reality of taking chances. Yeah. I wanted to take an uh, Ice Nine Kills approach where their songs, there's no lyrics to my songs. It's all instrumental. Mm -hmm. But their lyrics basically tell the stories of the movies the songs are about. For me, I wanted more sound effects here and there to kind of walk you through like you feel like you're in the movie sure. or listening to like a modern metal soundtrack of it. And uh, yeah, so that's where that idea stemmed from. And then executed, I was like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. It's such a tricky one. And I think Ice Nine is such a great job of like using that wealth of creative yeah. inspiration to draw and make this whole character. Like it feels like once they committed to that is when everything changed for them. Like I, th yeah. I feel like... Before that point, I guess Bad Omens is a similar thing of like Bad Omens for most of their lives, most of their lives that we've known them were not what they are now. And then yeah. suddenly over the course of a year or two, they went from Webster Underground to Arenas. Arenas and it seems, yeah. it seems like they skipped right over the Webster itself, right over the Palladium itself, and just yeah. went straight from 300 to 30,000 people. And it's yeah. been insane to watch that happen. And Ice Nine feels like it's almost directly a result of committing to the horror thing and really milking that and really finding yeah. all the niche things. And I, I remember when it started that I was like, there's not enough horror movies for them to do this. And of course, yeah. <laughs> I was wildly yeah. wrong. <laughs> they were right. They yeah. were the correct ones there. But yeah, it's pretty incredible to watch that happen. And uh, such a, yeah, such a commitment to such a specific fan base. Yeah, I think a, another part about that is, you know, like you said, Bad Omens and Ice Nine Kills, <clears throat> though they're drastically different, they don't just give people a show. They give people an experience. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain bands that can just give you a show and that itself is an experience. Like, Metallica. Sure. They're Metallica. Yeah. It is an experience just going to see them play. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> with Ice Nine Kills and Bad Omens, they give you this whole like light show, and mm -hmm. Ice Nine Kills has people reenact scenes, and that's just so cool. Yeah. I think that's, you know, not only is their music sick, but that's what made them stand out from the rest. People go there to be entertained. Mm hmm. I yeah. think I'd add sleep token to that same conversation of like, yeah, it is yeah. entertaining, even if you don't give a fuck about what you're hearing. It mm -hmm. is like visually stimulating. Uh, I heard someone I've heard in the past or have really like internalized this idea that like the best thing we can create is like the the combination of our personal interests. Yeah. And so it's this idea that if I just try and make a metal music video, it's going to be bland. It's going to be yeah. the same thing we've seen a thousand times mm -hmm. where I can make a good music video is for me like I'm I'm a history nerd. Like I, I that is what yeah. interests me. I love reading the stories. Uh, and so it's like, how do I take historical things that are more complicated and like vivid than any visual thing? And how do I combine that with what yeah. already exists? And it's like, that is where the good things come from. And Ice Nine is like, it's from that. It's them yeah. going, we love horror. This is something that we, horror. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, I love it more than anything. I love scary movies more than anything yeah. in the world. How do I combine that with a thing? And it's like, once they commit to that is when the good thing can happen. And I yeah. try and keep that in mind of like, yeah, I feel like I'm such a eclectic mess of different things that don't quite go together. And it's like, no, no, no. Put them all in a pot. Figure out how we can make this into one thing because that's that is my unique recipe, right? Yeah. Other, everything else I do is an imitation of something I already know. And once I can take my own five interests and put them in a pot, it's like, okay, 
Now this is authentically and uniquely me. We yeah. can debate whether it's good or bad or better or worse, but yeah. like at least it's me, and that is that is a foundation I can build from that yeah. is sound. And yeah. I try and come back to that as often as I can. Of like, whenever anything seems too outlandish, it's like no, 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 forget outlandish. Like, figure out where the bridge between these two things are, and that is where success and growth come from. Yeah, and that's the other thing too is even though it was <clears throat> the idea without seeing them execute it is you can hear and go, that's a little weird, mm-hmm. you know, but they loved it and they stuck yeah. with it. Not a lot of people, you know, just are them. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, especially with sleep token and all that, everyone wants to follow like a gimmick mm-hmm. and stuff, which is cool. You know, I mean, with my solo stuff, when I play live, I have a mask I'll wear. It won't be on the whole time. Obviously mm-hmm. the name of the project is Frankie Forbes. There's no secret. Um, you unless know, that's a stage name. Unless that's and a stage name. And you were born with a stage yeah. name. And at five years old, you committed to the stage name. Change my name to John. <laughs> <laughs> Just something. But um, yeah, and you know, those are cool. And uh, what I'm trying to do with my solo stuff is just <clears throat> have something a little bit of both. Take inspiration from that, but also it's just something I genuinely love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't always... Maybe I will. I won't always do songs more Halloween oriented, um, you know, but for right now, it's just what I'm interested in. This is what I like. And I know a lot of people also like it. I think it's fun. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. I think it comes to, yeah. also to me. It's like, uh, <laughs> don't let me speak for you here, but I yeah. can speak for at least myself. Here's like, I'm not making enough money to, for this not to be fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, dude, for real. It is yeah. such an expensive and all invested hobby where it's like, yeah. if I'm also not having fun on the back end of it, then like, this is a real bad yeah. miscalculation of funds and time yeah. and energy and just, yeah, energy, I think is the, maybe the best one there. Cause it's like, yeah, if, if I'm not having fun with this, then it can't go anywhere. Exactly. Like it is yeah. such a, I'm so much in the red <laughs> in terms of how much time and energy I put yeah. in. Like if it is not fun, then it's like, well, not yeah. profitable so it's not yeah there's all these other things that it's not and if yeah. it can't be fun then fuck it and i saw uh in one of your captions that was yeah do my little deep dive on instagram you yeah. really talked about how like playing drums has to be fun for you and how sometimes yeah. you'll go through moments where it loses its funness and you have to kind of like go back look within yourself and be like let's be yeah. a five-year-old again let's be a child and learn to play this instrument and i think that is such a valuable perspective uh, yeah. and even in my own videos i try and keep that in mind of like yeah, it has to be fun. And anytime I'm not having fun, it's like, okay, something is wrong here. How do I yeah. write the ship? And not that every not that every night at 3 a.m. when I've been editing all night, not that that is always a fun moment, but it's yeah. like there has to be a fun energy mixed in with these things. But on my way here, I was actually on the phone with one of my drum teachers um, when I was living in Memphis. <clears throat> and we were talking about how, you know, there was times where drumming wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> that's not always the case. When you learn something new, there is an element of this is stressful because yep. I want to get it. I know what it should sound like. Like he's the one that taught me um, a lot of Latin, bossa nova, all that stuff. And when you're sitting there trying to play it to a click, you just want to like throw a stick <laughs> at the wall. Yep. You're like, why can't I get this? Um, but then, you know, there's an element of, it's just drums. That's what he'd say to me all the time. It's just drums. If you mess up, make it sound cool. Mm-hmm. Have fun with it. Just because it's not right on it doesn't mean you failed at drums. Everyone messes up. I was telling that to one of my students um, when I played drums at church. He He's um, a bit nervous to mess up. I'm like, the amount of times I lose a stick mm-hmm. on a Sunday, the amount of times that you know I hit the wrong note and then very quickly add three more notes in to make it a cool fill. So everyone doesn't go, he just messed up. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have fun with it, even when it's not fun, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think dropping the stick is a perfect example. The other piece of that to me that's like, no one, it's all about how you handle dropping the stick, right? Yeah. Like everyone who is there watching you perform is either going to go, wow, he pulled a new stick out and kept going. That was cool. Yeah. Or they're going to go, wow, he lost his stick and everything fell apart. That yeah. Was, and it's like, no one's mad about losing the stick. No one is yeah. criticizing your hand for being sweaty. It's yeah. all about like, oh, he didn't handle that well. Or yeah. he took it like a champ. And that's the part people talk about and remember. Yeah. That's actually why in the, uh, as I lay dying cover, the literally the first hit, I dropped my stick, yep. but that was... I was dead set on doing that all one take. And that was like my third try (laughs) trying to do it one take. And I dropped the stick. And if you notice, I'm so focused. And then after I laugh about it Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up keeping it. And uh, my friend Maddie, who did the film, she's like, do you want me to like, you know, we can splice. I'm like, 
no, it's got it's got to be authentic, mm-hmm. but also it just goes to show that it's okay to drop a stick. Yep. This is raw. This is all one take. Yep. That's what I love about doing music is that it's just all me. Yeah, you know. And I think it's also it's our own insecurities. Where I uh, last week I had some of my favorite comedians on, which was very cool. If yeah. you're here from that episode, thank you. Um, but it was a very cool experience. And one of the things that I took away from it is like uh, I. I, it was hard to ask comedians serious questions. Like their, yeah. their job is to make people laugh. And it felt like yeah. asking them serious questions was like trying to be like keep high schoolers in a library quiet where it's like, it's just because I'm setting a, a serious expectation. It isn't that much funnier to go violate that expectation yeah. and say the most outlandish thing. So I felt like every time I asked a real question, I like set myself up for a nightmare. Uh, but one of the serious questions that did get to get processed uh, and then ultimately <laughs> she had it on later, <laughs> but uh, to get processed was this idea of like, I look at them as like, oh, everything's going great. You're doing it. Like things are happening for you. Like it seems like you're just coasting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's not true for anyone. Like yeah. Tom Brady, at the top of his game was still mad every day yeah. that he wasn't a better football player. And it's yeah. like, I don't know how much better you want to get, but that is a normal human thing. Yeah. And it was refreshing to ask them of like, yeah, it seems like everything's going well. I know that probably isn't the case. Yeah. So like, what are you working on? And they all had really honest answers of like, yes, this is what I, I'm struggling with this. I am terrible at this. It stresses me out every day to get better at this thing. Yeah. Uh, and each of them had a different perspective on it. But it was a really like eye opening one to me of like, oh, yeah, this whole food chain, every step of it, people are looking at themselves going, I'm not good enough. It's not enough. I got to yeah. do better. And that's refreshing of like, OK, so it's not just me. We are all in this in this game of trying yeah. to get better. So just, yeah, be accepting of yourself. Be, be kind to yourself that like, yeah. Things aren't going to be perfect all the time. And everyone at every step of the way is feeling that. And so our job then is to try and, yeah, be comfortable with where we are and accept it. It's like, yeah, ho- I wish I held that stick. I wish yeah. that every time I play drums, I hold the stick. It's yeah. annoying that I still drop sticks when I drum. But that's going to happen. Your whole life yeah. of drumming is going to be dropping sticks, whether it's a literal drop of a stick, whether it's, yeah, whatever the Travis Barker version of dropping a stick yeah. is of, yeah, your head wasn't tuned tight enough or something that is, to me, minuscule and to him is the end of the world to yeah. not have correct. Yeah, it's like... um I don't know where I heard this. Maybe it was like a Batman movie, but uh, or Daredevil, whatever. But it's uh, it's not about how hard you fall. It's about how fast you pick yourself back. Sure, up. I think that's a Rocky quote. I is that is that Rocky? I'm, I'm sure it's one of those quotes that has been like repurposed. Morphed, yeah, yeah. I believe it's Rocky. Is yeah, not how hard you get hit, but how quickly you get stand back or whatever. Who yeah. the fuck? Um, yeah. But yes, uh, it is exactly that, and it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as easy to internalize or not as easy to accept as it is to like say. Yeah. Where it's so, yeah. When yeah. you are knocked out, it's so easy to be like, fuck. Especially but, as a new player. Like yeah. when I first started playing shows when I was in Memphis, I think I was off time like in one of the songs. It was such a hard song that time changed like five different times. And uh, yeah, that happened. And I had a like mini meltdown, not publicly, but internally. I was like, they're all going to laugh at me. Mm-hmm. They all, they, everyone saw that and no one did. No, no one saw that. Yeah. It was just me. Yeah. Cause in my brain, the adrenaline and stuff, I, you know, the click slowed down and <laughs> I rushed and all I had to do was do a fill and then yep. no one noticed. There's a, yeah. on music videos, I always try and give the band like the speech before of like, listen, I hope you're on the correct fret. I hope you're playing the song. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, only you was ever going to know. Yeah. And it made me really, uh, I was listening to a podcast this morning of uh, Ori McGinnis and Ori McGinnis is like uh, the spirit box director. Like he does a lot of like okay, big, yeah. big budget music videos, uh, wage war I'm trying to think of other whatever, but yeah, that mm-hmm. tier of like big metal core stuff that isn't a day to remember and bring me the horizon, but mm-hmm. is as big as we can get in our, yeah. our little circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said the same thing of like, yeah, when, when I make a mistake in VFX, most people go like, Oh, his shoe was untied. Like they never yeah. get to like, Oh, the VFX was wrong. And yeah. the drumming, it's the same thing of like, they're way more likely to be like, oh, his hair was messed up. Yeah. That is a way more common feedback than, I think he was off time in that 3-4 to 4-4 four, four switch. That's funny you say that because one of the bands that I kind of got my start in mm-hmm. as drumming uh, was, I went to music school in Memphis, Tennessee, and then uh, I ended up leaving to join this band called What We Do in Secret, <clears throat> and we were signed to Face Down Records. Hell yes. And uh, we did a music video for a song called Silhouette, and... This was my first, like, legit music video, so I didn't have, like, in-ears or anything. We muted everything, but it was still loud. Mm -hmm. So in one of the scenes, even though I'm going hard, you see me, like, kind of hesitate, and I don't fully hit the cymbal, and there's that one scene where only I notice it Mm -hmm. that I didn't hit a cymbal there. And the cymbal sound is there, but, (laughs) you know, um, so yeah, Yeah. that's true. Like you are the only one that's going to notice everyone else that sees it. It's such a cool video with all the flashing lights. They're like, this is awesome. And there's me like, oh, I didn't hit 
And I, I'd also even go to the next level of like if if and when someone does notice those things, like thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you watching the thing close enough to find that because yeah. most people would never have That's gotten true. past the yeah. surface level. Where it's <laughs> almost like it's almost flattering when someone gets that tier of like, oh, you watched this thing ten times. And yeah. if it was cynical ten times of you looking for something wrong, then like go fuck yourself, my bad. <laughs> but like probably you just like the song enough that you watched it ten times and on You're that like, tenth time was like yeah. There's a crash missing right there. And that to me is flattering of like, yeah, I appreciate. And also like, I appreciate that everything else was done so well mm -hmm. that you got to that part of your list. You know, you got yeah. through like it was, it was exposed correctly. It was bright enough. It was mm -hmm. dark enough for the right times. Everything sounded good. Everyone was on time. Yeah. And you got through all of these layers of like quality control. Yeah. That you then got to like at 340, there's one crash missing and it's like, yeah. Thank you. Mission yeah. accomplished. Everything else went great. I, yeah. I'm happy with that. I will gladly take that. Feedback. Yeah. If that's the only thing like bad, quote unquote, that you noticed, yep. you did something that's, pretty well. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Yes. Uh, you mentioned Memphis a couple times there. So yes, yeah. School in Memphis. Yeah. Is, where does where does Memphis fit into this journey? Yeah. So um, I did not always play drums. Like a lot of guys I know that play drums, they grew up, you know, banging on stuff all the time, I which is sort of true. Three year old, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is sort of true. I've always like been like tapping. Yep, annoys my grandmother uh, so bad. Every holiday or every time I go to visit, she's like, "Stop <laughs> tapping." Um, but that um, is a grandma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is she's, the most grandma yeah, she goes, complaint. Yeah, she's like, "Stop it." <laughs> But, my grandma's always mad at me. My hair was too long, and it's the same yeah. thing of like they love us. They are they are happy with us how we are. Yeah. But if they could change one thing about <laughs> yeah. us, it would be this little thing. Yeah. yeah. She she loves it, but also it just gets gets of to course, it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I actually grew up, uh, you know, very outdoorsy, but I did love music, mainly classic rock. Is what my father, you know, raised me on: White yep. Snake, Van Halen, uh, you know, uh, White Cross, Str Striper, all yep. that. Um, and so I really, at that time it was all guitar solos. I wanted to learn guitar. And, uh, so I did learn guitar and I was good at it. I just could not sit down and, you know, I could get songs here and there cause I enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, shout out to Sandy, my guitar teacher. She was incredible. She's the reason I stuck with music too. Interesting. Um, because she was just so great with teaching a little ball of energy like me um, and to where I couldn't focus on anything. I didn't like practicing scales and all that. I just wanted to, you know, play good Charlotte and, you know, Van yeah. Halen. Um, and, uh, eventually that, you know, wasn't my thing, but a big part of my guitar lessons was tapping because she wanted to make sure I knew rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I had an outlet for all that little built up mm -hmm. little fiddling that mm -hmm. I did. Um, and eventually I'm like, I want to, I think I might want to play drums. And the album that did it for me was Demon Hunter's self-titled album. Um, when I first heard that, I was like, this is sick. I need to do that. <clears throat> um, sorry, Sandy. <laughs> and I called her. She's like, just promise me you'll stick with music. I don't care that you don't play guitar. She's like, but, <clears throat> you know, you're talented. I want you to keep at it. And I'm like, okay. You know, that, that is what I'm, I want to switch to drums. She's like, my heart's broken, but you know, at least you're staying with it. How um, old do you this time? I was like 11, 12. Okay. So, you know, I was still a kid. Um, and I started messing around on a little e-kit <clears throat> similar to that. Um, except for it was sort of broken. So <laughs> all I had was my, uh, iPod yep. and, uh, drums with no sound which kind of helped me. That's how I learned a lot of songs today. I'll turn all the mics off and I'll just have the song. And if I hit something wrong, I can hear it. And that's how I kind of, yeah. yeah. So it's funny how that kind of transferred to yes. how I approach things. Um, <clears throat> but so I started doing that and, uh, you know, I didn't get real serious about practicing until maybe 15, uh, 14, 15, um, when I saw... Um, I think it was for today, Gideon and, oh, what was the other band? It was some other band with them, <clears throat> but I was silent planet there. How could I forget them? Cause they, they have a huge influence on me. Um, and I'm like, there's no way I'm not doing this for a living. This is awesome. Um, you know, I love, you know, at the time there was not a lot of, Christian bands that were like cool to mm -hmm. me. 
Um, you know, you have basic CCM, which I'm not a huge fan of that style. And these guys were just, I liked the lyrics and I liked, you know, what they were doing and the music they were playing. And so I'm like, these guys are sick. They were like my heroes. And little did I know that the band I had mentioned, What We Do in Secret, was actually on that bill. They had to drop out of the Hartford date because something went wrong with their van. Mm-hmm. So then, because their guy in the vocal booth two weeks before, yeah, <laughs> talks about a crash. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so I went to, uh, you know, I wanted to do uh, music for a living. The horror on my parents' face mm-hmm. when I said I want to do music for a living, <laughs> not because they were unsupportive, they just want the best for me. Sure, um, but it's not a, yeah. not a road paved with riches for most people. Yeah, it is a road um, paved with suffering and hard times and yeah. a lot of lost money for most people. Yeah, yeah, and so I found this one college through a friend of mine, Dixon. Um, it was in Memphis, Tennessee called Visible Music College. And it was the one school that actually seemed to build their students up to do mainstream like music. Whereas other ones, they have a music program, but you sit Mm. there and you play jazz band and, you know, maybe you'll get a chance to practice on your own. Um, and so I actually ended up meeting before that, um, I got, I was self-taught up until then, um, on drums and then I sat down with uh, a family friend, Kevin Finn. Uh, he taught me the foundations of music. Um, he did not have me touch a drum kit until like three months into lessons. Everything was marching on snare. And at first I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, I got this. I, I don't need any of that. And then, um, yeah, I was very quickly humbled. Like Is it the like first lesson. rudiments, theory? Yeah. Like what kinds of things are you less, doing? Less theory. Everything had a backbone of theory. And I learned a lot from him, but it was more how to read rudiments and apply rudiments, not only on the pad, but the drum kit, which is what he was teaching me to do by getting good being stationary. Mm -hmm. And then one day he just sat me behind the drum kit and he goes, all right, play. And then he's like, just do everything I showed you because I learned all these Connecticut halftime, all the uh, Irish, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was able to apply that to whole kit, and that made me a million times better of a drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, so going into music school, um, that helped me a lot because I had he had prepared me to the next step to do that. And the teacher I had at um, Visible was actually Jen Ledger from Skillet's drum teacher, Simon. Mm-hmm. So, and he had a massive impact on my playing. Um, you know, without him, I would not have the confidence that I have playing live. Um, how big of a school is this? Like how many students? Very are small. Okay. Very small. It's, uh, I think it, it was under 100 with staff. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it was, um, I don't want to say exclusive as it was not as well known. Yep. Um, but, you know, I'm so thankful that I had the people there yeah. um, that I did because – the friendships I made there, you know, I'm still friends with them to this day. They're some of my best friends. Um, you know, like I just said, Simon was the one I was on the phone with um, coming over here. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I went there, and uh, Simon pushed me a lot in genres I would have never touched, um, you know, uh, like samba, bossa nova, all the Latin stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so eventually I did my time in, uh, in music school, and I did a drum cover. Uh, of Ocean's Day Alaska. Cool. High Horse. And that drum cover, I was actually, I had to learn it overnight because we had a month to learn whatever we wanted to do for an ad for the school. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting concussed nice. really bad. Um, and I couldn't do anything for a month. And I just played it on repeat, like face my laptop screen mm-hmm. away from me because I couldn't look at the light. And um, I spent like 8 p.m. till like whenever the sun came up the following morning, the day before doing it. And then I did it. And then once it was posted, my phone like blew up the next day. Um, And I went on my messages and what we do in secret had messaged me. And I go to Simon. I'm like, hey, I have this opportunity to tour with these guys. And he's like, dude, just do it. Get the experience. He's like, Mm -hmm. you can always come back to school You know, but some people, their paths are different. You might not even need a degree. Some people, that's what they want. That's fantastic. But 
go do it. You know, don't just talk about doing it. This is what you've been talking about forever. Do it. It's right there. Um, and, Great for uh, that guy. I feel yeah. like it's so easy for him to be like, no, you're here. Let's take yeah. – yeah. Simon's a very unique uh, person in the best way. Yeah. Um, he's very, very encouraging, and uh, he's very insightful. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I did that. I ended up getting signed to Face Down Records, which at the time all of the bands I listened to were on. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, COVID hit, and uh, that kind of put a damper on everything. Yes. But I still keep in touch with Josh and Clay to this day. Um, we did an album called Repose, and to this day, that's one of the proudest things I'm a part of because it's just, in my opinion, I love listening to it. It's so sick. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell, um, so how long are you ultimately in school then? Only, only two years, and then okay. I briefly went back to a different university uh, during COVID, because mm-hmm. you know, I kind of, everyone kind of felt stuck. Sure. And you're like, well, what else am I gonna yes. do? Yeah, yeah. Um, but at, in the end, I ended up moving back to Memphis for a little bit, which didn't work out. Not on the music side, just you know, uh, a whole bunch of other factors. Life, yeah, yeah. So I uh, ended up coming back here, which ended up being the best thing ever, because I ended up meeting Sean and getting plugged in with all you guys, and mm-hmm. you know, ended up finally taking this project that i've had in my head for years and executing it hell yes uh the other thing i like to or i'm going back to drum school for one second here the other piece of this that i'm always fascinated by is like uh when i was in school similar to you you were explaining how like most music programs are like you can be in the jazz band yeah you can do music here but it's different than what sounds like what you were doing which Mm -hmm. was like a much more like nurtured musician Mm -hmm. or i don't know how to like separate two of but it does sound like yours is more like geared to like go have a career in music and the music programs that I'm aware of are usually more geared towards like becoming a music teacher kind yeah. of. And there's a difference there of like being in a band and being on tour mm-hmm. and like teaching the instrument. Uh, my parallel there is that when I was in school, uh, I went to I bounce around a little bit similar to you, uh, but I was studying psychology the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those where like, as I was finishing up my degrees when I was getting into the camera stuff and there mm-hmm. was a, a real logical idea of like, well, I should just put all my time into like the film program on campus. Yeah. And it was similar, I think to what your reservation was of like, I don't doubt that they could teach me how to do some things, but yeah. they're not catered to the part of this that I am most interested in. And like, yeah. to me going to film school is like, I'm going to learn how to develop film, which yeah. I can't do to this day. And I think it'd be cool to do, but like that isn't part of making music video in this day and age. It's important for like the theory and for the understanding of the history and where this industry came from. And like, it's important in other places, but just not the one that I'm interested in. And so yeah. ultimately film school felt like it would be almost counterproductive. Like it would take this thing that I love and make it very academic and structured and yeah. rigid and scientific in a way it's like i don't know i I do like the science of it but i don't like it in that form i guess uh my flip then is it sounds like you went like entered with a similar thought and then came out going like no that was really valuable so like yeah what made that so valuable like what would you what advice would you give to other drummers who are considering like should i go to school for this should i just stay home and write in my basement forever like how do you i guess for me it felt like yeah i felt like i could do more with more free time and more time on YouTube learning my camera than I could if I went to film school. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious for you, like, how do you separate those two? What would you tell another drummer who's interested in school and kind of debating, like, yeah, what programs are right for me? Is a program right for me? Should yeah. I just stay on YouTube? How does this thing go? Yeah. So I think it all depends on the individual and how you learn. Um, <clears throat> I don't learn like most other people. Um, I'm very hands on. Mm-hmm. I have to do it myself. Yeah. Put me in a classroom. You'll have me for like maybe 30 minutes. You know, and then I'm just thinking about, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anything, anything else that else. is outside of this room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so if you're more of an intellectual and you enjoy the, you know, I guess linear process of like, this is a note, this what this means, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah. I mean, music school would be an awesome thing. I, I went uh, to school with a guy like that and he tremendously succeeded in that aspect. Mm-hmm. All, all aspects, but especially in like the theory and all that, because his, he was very um, on paper oriented. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm like a monkey. I can't, you know, focus on that for the life of me. I need to just hit things with sticks. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't think it was not, um, I don't think it was a bad thing that I went to music school. Uh, it was the opposite. It was great, but you take it and you, go in with the mindset of I'm here to take up as much as I can Mm -hmm. and then use it. A lot of people, they'll go into school 
and they'll never use what they, yeah. you know, learned. And they're working at like Starbucks and stuff, which is, you know, fine. Everyone needs, I have a day job. Right. Um, but you know, to, it seems like people just give up because they feel like they're, it's hopeless mm-hmm. almost like they, they can't possibly execute what they've learned. So I think a good combination of either both or going one of one or the other, find out how you learn, find out, you know, what your strengths are and then work on your weaknesses. Like I said earlier, Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, do it with everything. A lot of people, they're going to tell you, you know, don't do that, you know, or you can't do that. Not necessarily because they want to destroy you, but that's their way of, Hey, I want the best for you. Um, you're going to be one of those guys on the side of the street with a guitar with an open case, yep. you know? Um, and that's not always the case. You have to really invest time outside of playing your instrument into it, making connections. Going to shows is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people will say, well, that's not how it's done anymore. It depends on, you know, the crowd. Um, social media, huge. Even though, you know, I didn't get known for my drumming, I got known for scaring my dog in <laughs> Which a I absolutely dragon yes. suit. Dude, nothing aggravates me more than posting, like spending so much time <laughs> like doing this fill that I think is awesome that I can't play. So I spend like three hours and I finally get the shot with mm-hmm. the lights. And they're like, dog. Like <laughs> that's all they care about. That gets like maybe 30 or something likes. A couple hundred views, which is cool. But 30 likes, the dog video, like 12K. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> that was so nuts. Like, yes. What do I need to do? <laughs> yes. How do you recreate that lightning yeah. in a ball? Yeah. It is the craziest thing. Uh, I, for context people, for people who don't know, is this. Yes. Frankie went viral for scaring his dog. You're in like a big Halloween inflatable suit. Yeah. And your dog is a big German shepherd. Yeah. Big German shepherd that was on the floor. Massive and so the, the video is funny because the dog is like scared for a second and goes into like, like fear mode and then gets like defensive after that. And yeah, it's funny to watch the dog go from like, like, like a child. Scooby-Doo fear. runs yeah. away. Yeah. Scooby-Doo run all of a sudden to then being assertive. It's like, no, you can't be assertive. After yeah. You just did that. We just saw yeah. how you handled this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like, um, those movies where like the guy's trying to impress the girl and he falls and he brushes himself off real quick. Yes. Like, yes, exactly that. Yeah. And then he's being tough after it's like, yeah. you can't be tough after yeah. that. We saw. Yeah. We all saw. Yeah. 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 And it's a great analogy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is a wild thing to have this like enormous viral success into your belt. And yeah, it is not in the place that you would have yeah. hoped that that, that yeah. energy is invested. But I think that's how yeah. things tend to go. And uh, yeah, I don't know how we, I don't know how we do better than that. I think our job is, yeah, just to keep putting things out that are funny. When you put that video out, like, what were you expecting to happen? Honestly, I'm like, hey, someone record this. This will be funny. And my sister pulled her phone out. And I thought the dog was going to, like, attack me. And my family was just going to laugh at me being in agonizing pain. <laughs> sure. And um, she ended up freaking out. Yep. I mean, we did get her as a puppy, so I guess that was the craziest thing she's seen up until that point. Sure. Which I wasn't thinking of. That's probably horrible. Yeah. I, like, traumatized the dog. <laughs> um, which I did get death threats I bet from you that. Did. They, you, they thought it was animal yep. abuse. I'm like, yep. you've never, like, scared a little cousin or something, yep. like, just yes. what you do, yep. you know, it's relax. A, it's a Dog's sign of fine. Uh, endearment in yeah. a way that is not visible on the surface, but yeah. it is the same thing of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all we've all been yeah. there. But um, yeah. So I I did not expect it to go that way, but that's the way it went. <laughs> Uh, did you ever post like more videos of your dog? Like, I feel like it's the only one I've seen and I feel like it would have been so tempting yeah. to try and make a series out of that. Yeah. I mean, I've posted some things on the story, uh, yeah. just because people were kept commenting. I'd reply to the comments on my story, like me snuggling this gigantic creature that shouldn't be in a house, <laughs> but is, yep. um, which is crazy. You look at that dog, it's massive. This is like a wolf Yeah, and yeah. it, you know, is afraid of the rain, you know, <laughs> It's so domesticated. Uh, the, the other part of this that I love is that Halloween is your favorite day of the year. That is your your mecca. Yeah. And that is the dog's worst day of the year where it sees <laughs> other people in these inflatable costumes again. And like a trick-or-treater comes to the door and it's just, yeah. Dude, really my up. sister has the funniest video on her phone of when we had trick-or-treaters. Picture the noise she made in that video times infinity. She was screaming like you would have thought a small child was being tortured. It was insane. And on the ring camera, you see them come up. They're all in, like, stormtrooper gear and (laughs) stuff like that. And she just shrieks on the top of her lungs. 
it, the noises that come out of that thing, I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't line up with yes. what what she looks like. There's also like a beautiful <laughs> statement there of like. Uh, the human condition is very diverse and people yeah. can can be into different things in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. And I think on a tiny microcosm of that is like, that's a police dog. Like, yeah. That is a dog that is designed to be, yeah, hunting a, yeah. a predator, essentially. Yeah. And like, <laughs> somehow it has been loved so much yeah. that the brain is scary to it. And it's like, yeah. that is the human condition, right? That is how, yeah. how diverse we are. But it's nice to see it, uh, the, the, I don't know. It's the, funnier to see in something that should be legitimately threatening. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. A wild time. Yeah. But at some point, uh, music comes back into our lives. Yeah. As well. So we have this dog thing. Uh, and then uh, we were at the university. Uh, we come home. Oh, we go on tour with the band. Yes. Uh, yeah. So you leave school to go join this band. And it sounds like that all went well. There's an album yeah. associated with like Yeah. It sounds like it's a hugely positive experience that, yeah, unfortunately it's cut short by COVID, but yeah. it sounds like you had to yeah travel and explore a little bit. That was some of the best like time and memories I have was it was a brief tour, but it was the first I've ever been mm-hmm. on. And the guys are great. I still keep in touch with them. Uh, Blake, uh, he's not in the band, but he played bass with us. He's a good friend of mine. Josh, same thing. Clay, actually, um, he's the guitar player or does he play guitar or bass? For Norma, Norma Jean now. Hell yes, okay. Yeah, so, and then I got to meet Norma Jean and become friends with them. Um, I think the biggest thing with that band that was the moment of, I finally made it, mm-hmm. back to Silent Planet, was we have a song called um, Repose, which is the title track, and uh, we had Garrett do a guest spot on it. Hell yes. And it was so sick. I remember being in the studio. I tracked the whole album one night, um, and I hadn't heard the final version of anything because I was just going off of, like, the guitar and bass of what they had. Sure. I hadn't heard any vocals, any anything. I was in there. I just kept messing up because it was so cool. I could not believe that not only Garrett was on it, and also he's just, like, the best guy ever, but it sounded Mm -hmm. so awesome, and the fact that my band – was able to get, you know, him on it yep. was sick. And then we ended up playing with them, um, which was one of the highlights of my life. Um, they're all such great guys yes. and so personable too. Um, and it was just, it was awesome getting to play with them and then have Garrett on the song. It was sick. So Hell yeah. yes. every yeah. time they're in town, I go and see them just because yes. they're amazing. Hell yes. Yeah. Where was the show you played with them? Uh, Memphis. It was at Growlers, okay. um, which is a popular like uh, bar venue type okay. down there. Hell yes. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. But I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize you had that, that little uh, adventure. Under, yeah, under yeah well. it, was, cool. it was pretty cool. And then obviously when COVID hit, kind of got stagnant. Sure. Tried doing, you know, a lot of stuff that didn't work. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do music, you know? And then um, I got a call from this band that wanted me to play on their album, which didn't work out. <clears throat> which is fine, but that's how I got connected with Sean. And then uh, he hit me up. He goes, hey, you said something about a solo project when you were tracking drums for this. Why don't we make that happen? And the flame was, like, reignited. Hell yes. Um, yeah, so I'm doing my solo stuff, and uh, I'm doing uh, stuff with another band uh, called Take the Flame. It's another one of my drummer friends who is now on vocals that I, you know, we, growing up in high school, we kind of were on the same page. We had the same friend group. So now it's cool to be with him yep. and do that stuff with another group of just awesome guys and awesome musicians. Um, and I'm a part of a couple other projects I can't talk about. Classic. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's been in the making for one of them's been in the making for about a year almost. Yep. Um, which I'm super excited to release stuff because <laughs> the most music thing ever. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. Um, because I actually was a fan of these guys yeah. before they hit me up, and when they hit me up, it was kind of like stagnant. I'm like, mm-hmm. what's gonna happen? Yep. And then around Christmas time, they're like, let's FaceTime. Yep. And it was just cool. Same thing with them. They're just awesome dudes. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. I have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Hell yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can't wait to hear more about that. Uh, regarding the solo stuff specifically, is there any timeline that we can anticipate hearing more stuff if there is more stuff? Yeah. So I have a uh, a couple videos I have coming out for TikTok and Scrum. No major music videos, 
just little ads I have coming out. Uh, my friend Maddie is going to be uh, filming them, and I'm super pumped about those. Um, you can you know expect those around Halloween time, uh, September, October ish. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, new stuff isn't going to drop until next year. I have um, I want to wait on uh, you know the studio things that Sean's doing, mm -hmm. and um, you know, about to be working with some brands again, can't talk about, sure. but I want to make sure that, um, when I do it and I finally record everything that it's just sleep token level clean Sure. in that all the sounds I want. Cause I don't use any, uh, samples Interesting. On, on my drums. I want it to be as raw sounding as possible. Cause in my mind, if I'm going to say, Hey, go listen to this. I need to be the one making those noises. Mm -hmm. Sean will work his magic with mixing and like, you know, a little bit of EQ here and there, yeah. but you know, I want it to be as authentic as possible. Hell yes. Uh, yeah. I wanted to touch on, we're actually coming up on our hour here, which yeah. is time has flown by. So we got yeah. a couple things. Uh, if you're in any huge rush, we can cut it at an hour, but if you got time, no, to yeah, keep on time. cooking. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep on cooking. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on like the content part of this. So I feel like mm -hmm. you're doing a great job of promoting yourself, of putting out clips on reels, mm -hmm. on TikTok, on all these different platforms. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on like uh, the two pieces of this that I'm curious about. One is like the physical space of like, uh, I my joke here, and I hope you don't take this to heart too much. Yeah, it looked like it was a freezer before. I, I assume it was a basement with like the silver walls. It just, does look exactly. And like then I a think freezer. you put curtains up. I assume with the same basement though. But like, yeah, is it? Uh, I'm always curious. Like, drums are the only instrument that like you can't play everywhere. That it's like yeah. that part of being a drummer is having a space to play drums, which is such a <clears throat> shitty reality of it to me. Of like, yeah. you can be a singer anywhere. You can be a singer anytime. You can yeah. play guitar anywhere in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I know so many drummers who was like, <laughs> I haven't played drums since three weeks ago because I just don't have a place to put my kit right now. Yeah. So for starters, yeah, where is your kit? It seems like it's in a basement somewhere. Yeah, is it somewhere you have access to? Is it a practice space? Like, yeah. where is the kit? So it's actually my basement. That's the old, um, we had what was called a playroom. Yep. I was a Classic. kid, we had an air hockey table and oh, stuff. Yes. And um, my, uh, when I first got a drum kit, we put it in that area and it was just an echo tunnel. And it was miserable yes um so my father actually went in and got this like foam board stuff from home depot okay and it one is side is shiny shit? yeah okay. one side is yeah. shiny so it looks like a giant freezer it does. and then after doing a couple videos like with the ead hooked up to where i had solid quality audio i'm like this isn't gonna work this mm -hmm. this looks weird um so i put up the curtains yep. and i realized i have nowhere to hang the curtains from so Sometimes when you see they're down, it's because the tape just fell off and I didn't feel like putting them back up. There's, one of these yeah. walls fell right before yeah. an episode at one point, and there's yeah. a time where it's, it's like so we might frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, so I I got on Amazon my logo on a on a thing and mm -hmm. put it up there, and so I just crop all the tape lines out. That is what's happening yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, these folks will never know, but yes, yeah. that is exactly what is happening here. Yeah. Uh, and then you mentioned the EAD10. Is that the thing that like sits on the kick drum and picks yeah. up all the? Can you make that make sense to me? Where I yeah. I lose I think what's happening is it's like recording just everything as any microphone would and then yeah. separating by frequency into the kit and then is it like sampling those sounds? Like how yes it doesn't make no. any sense to me that it sits on the kit and records everything well. Yeah, so I am going to do my best because I'm like a grandma with technology. Okay. I know nothing. Actually, my friend Nick, shout out to Nick. Um, he's one of the tightest drummers I've ever met. Um, and he started doing these videos and I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I've had this thing for a year and can't figure this out. And he face FaceTime me or Snapchat, whatever we did. And he's like, bro, just plug it into the computer, like get an adapter and plug it in. It's that simple. And I'm like, huh, Good that's, <laughs> that's how it works. Um, but yeah, so what it does is it's a trigger Yep. and you can turn the trigger on and off. Um, and that's what the part that rests on the kick. Yep. And then the top half, um, auto like mics and EQs everything roughly and compresses it roughly um, enough to where you can get a good quality mm -hmm. sounding microphone sound on a drum kit without having to have like eight mics. mics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's really cool. Definitely worth the investment. Are you um, producing much on the back end, or does it come out pretty much? Good to go from there. I do some mixing just because, oh, okay. you know, certain songs um, I want to 
have like more kick or I, I'm doing a fast kick bar. So I want that to be defined mm-hmm. or other parts for the most part. I just make it sound good as raw as I can, but also make the thing stand out. Sure. Yeah. I'm always fascinated by it. Cause it's like, uh, being a drummer means playing drums. Yeah. Being a drummer in this definition means being comfortable with cameras, with video editing, with yeah. audio editing, with audio recording. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you have to wear 10 hats to do this simple thing. Yeah. And it's very frustrating because I have this like ring light Mm -hmm. that I got from Walmart and it like (laughs) overheats every like, like 20 minutes. So I, there's been times I've been the perfect take and right as I'm about to hit the last note, it just goes to black. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. If it was timed, right? (laughs) Yeah. but. But, um, yeah. So it's very frustrating trying to go out, press the button, wiggle your way back behind the kit. Make sure nothing falls. Make sure the tape's up. And, uh, yeah, it's very time-consuming, which is why I haven't posted a lot recently, mainly because I've been doing all this cool stuff that I can't talk to anyone about yet. Um, So I haven't really had time to post, and I can't really tell people, hey, sorry, I've been doing this because I can't talk about it. That is the story of my life where at the moment I, I talk about how my year is full of music videos, and I recognize that if you go to my Instagram feed, it's all podcast, and there's yeah. going to be some dissonance of like, how is this? Yeah. How do these do it? It's like, yeah. well, we'll see. We'll yeah. see very soon. But for the moment, yeah, all I can talk about is these podcasts. Which yeah. Is part of why they were valuable to me of like, I understand the music videos are going to be on their own schedule, but I, to some degree, it's out of my hands, right? I have five or 10 projects that I've been delivered to the band and I'm just waiting on them to go, okay, this is the date it's going to happen. Yeah. Now it's going to, and it's like, I can't be in that limbo forever. I have to be able to put something out routinely. And that's where the podcast came in. It's like, this comes out every week. There is no stakes. I don't have to wait for anyone. I don't have anyone's blessing to wait for. Like it can just yeah. happen when I want it to happen. And that's been, that's been huge. But yes, that is not how most of music works at yeah. all. Uh, do you like doing all the technical stuff there where I think, uh, we're talking about how drums have to be fun. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is true again for video as well. And it's like, I, I think Sean Dalkey was the one. And I don't know if he still does this, but I think for a while he was taking Sundays to like, use for learning where i i believe i think he still does that okay yeah um i yeah he's coming back on in the near future so i'll ask him that but i believe uh and yeah forgive me if it wasn't him or whatever but it was the idea that like one day a week all i'm doing is learning like i'm not taking any clients i'm not doing any client work it is all learning focused and i i think that would benefit me but it just isn't how my brain works where you were talking about like i'm similar yeah you're talking about how like your academic learning style was like there's no, there's no academic stuff. It has I just to have to on. do it and fail enough times yes. to get it right. And I think a hundred percent. And for me in the context of learning like unreal engine, which is like the 3d video software yeah. in the context of doing that, it's like, I can't sit down and do an exercise for the sh- Like it, it yeah. is, it is too much of an investment to sit down and not have a payoff for it. Yeah. What I can do though, is sit down for a music video and go, Ooh, I want this. Uh, right now I'm working on making these like big billowing clouds of smoke in a scene yeah. and I just don't know how to make them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, well now I can watch a tutorial and learn how to make these big billowing yeah. clouds of smoke, but I can't just sit down on a Sunday afternoon and make clouds of smoke just for the hell of it. There yeah. has to be this application to it. Uh, is recording, like sitting and recording drums similar to you? Like, does it have to be for a cover? Are you able to sit down and do exercises or audio tests just for the fun of it? Like yeah. all these other auxiliary skills that go into being a drummer? So the technical side with the videos... I'm actually not huge on. It's like a necessary thing yep. that I've grown to like because the outcome is cool. Yep. But doing it, it's so tedious, and sometimes I want to rip my hair out. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why won't it work? You know, I just moved the thing here. It's yep. like the you know the typical like dad meme where it's like this thing won't uh-uh. answer. It's like I'm sliding it. Yeah. But um, yep. that's how I feel when I go to edit videos. Yep. Um. But um, I'm slowly getting better. Like I said, you have to go through that enough times yeah. to do that. The main thing um, I do enjoy, like you said, uh, taking time away and learning, stuff like that. I'm Recently, I started going back because I've spent a lot of time behind the kit that I've neglected the practice pad. Yep. And there's so much good that can come out of ignoring the kit and doing the practice pad and going back to rudiments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Luke Holland does that chris turner does that um you know those are two of my like drumming heroes and um when they do that and then they apply it to the kit they come out with these insane things Mm -hmm. uh that you normally wouldn't think of but slow down you're like oh that's just a double paradiddle he just divided it between Mm -hmm. all of his limbs um so i i can do that um you know because i get enjoyment out of doing that like walking step by step 
if I can get it relatively smooth, then I'm I'm enjoying it. I can do it over and over and over again until, you know, you do it clean on the kit, stuff like that. Um, there is some joy that comes out of it, though, not being able to do it and then being hyper-focused and mm-hmm. doing that. Just for some reason with technology, that isn't there for me. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the one thing. But everything else with drumming, uh, when it comes to learning new things, so, you know, there's times where you're sitting there and you're like, I just want to go get food. I'm hungry. You find all these distractions, mm-hmm. almost like if you were to be studying, like, what's the weather like outside, oh, yes. you know? Um, but, um, you know, so once you get over that hill that you push yourself, yep. then I'm fully invested. Yeah. It's just initially going into it. Yep. You know, it's a mindset thing more than anything else yeah i yeah. try so hard to like make myself do 10 minutes of a thing and once i do the 10 minutes and the next four hours are easy but it's yeah. so hard to do those first 10 minutes uh, i heard someone break this down i read a book called uh, atomic habits uh, and it's about forming habits making things happen uh, and the best advice from the book or one of the pieces of the book that resonated with me the most uh, was this idea of like uh, I'm not a huge fitness person. I, yeah, I'm always like on and off working out, but uh, working out was the example in the book. And they gave the example of like, don't set like a marathon as your first workout yeah. or not even literally a marathon. Don't set bench pressing and tricep extensions. Like don't do everything. Do one push up. Make that your goal for today. Yeah. And if you do one push up, you're probably going to do two. You're probably going to do a sit up or two after. And like, yeah, but one push up is a manageable goal. That is one thing of like, it is inexcusable not to do a push up today. Like, yeah. I don't care what you finish. Like you can make time for one push up. If you set that time to do squats and deadlifts and it's like, you're never going to do that. It's too much to sign up for. And I try and apply that same thing to my work of like, yeah, these four hours of making billowing smoke clouds feels daunting. Let me just sit down for 10 minutes and just try And if after yeah. 10 minutes, I'm fucked then so be it. Yeah. But usually when you do those 10 minutes, like, oh, now I'm in the flow. I'm good. Here's the four hours on making smoke. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's similar. Although I will say I have sort of the opposite approach with me. I need to. Like, if there's a big thing, I need to tackle it head mm-hmm. on. Like, the first song I taught myself ever was Nightmare by Avenged Sevenfold. <laughs> yeah. And it's because I was, I had already had the, you know, the tapping from, mm-hmm. you know, Sandy. She told me how to do that. Yep. But that massive fill, it's like, duh, 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 duh. I listen to that. I'm like, I'm going to play this. I didn't watch any t- tutorials. Sure. I, I just played it through as miserably as possible. And even though it sucked the entire time, eventually it sounded cool. <laughs> yes. It's like, that's my yep. approach. You just have to go into it. There yep. are times where it's wise and you need to, you know, again, be humble and yeah. step back and go, maybe I should <laughs> take this piece by piece. But, you know, same thing with recording. Um, yeah. uh, when That's how Sean met me. I recorded a whole EP in like one go. Same thing with what we do in secret. I just like getting it done one go. Because if I'm there... Mm-hmm. I like have to hyper focus on it. Yep. Otherwise, you know, it's not that I won't, my heart won't be into it, but I'm doing this. I want someone to feel like they're listening to me play all the way through. And same thing when it comes to learning a song, I want to play it as aggressively as possible. And I want people to hear that when I play it. I don't just want to play something. I want them to be like, yo, he's hitting that, mm-hmm. you know? hell yes dude yeah that rules yeah I, i'm excited for that all, that all to translate and for everyone else to hear yeah what you've been cooking up in secret yeah <laughs> over the last year yeah so. no pun intended <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah it's my bad uh, yeah. yeah so to say it all come to life yeah. uh my i like to wrap up here with two last questions here uh so one of them is what are you like currently learning so i mentioned the yeah, i guess i asked the comedians this as well um what are you something you're currently learning so in the context of drums in the context of producing the context of making content like what yeah. is something that you are currently learning currently trying to get better at currently in yeah youtube university studying up and trying to trying to figure out more of yeah i think what i'm really going back to now is uh for a while i, I stuck on groove because i was always a, a speed guy and then i i was on groove for so long to where i kind of lost a little bit of you know the technique i mm-hmm. had for going really fast in the new stuff i'm writing um i had to program some of it because i can't play it because it's so fast yeah um so i'm definitely taking a step back um i forget this guy's name uh he's like a pro mark sabian artist on tiktok he just goes insanely fast for no he looks like he's just twitching i've been watching a lot of his videos um with for blast beats stuff like that and um i'm really taking a step back and going back to rudiments like i said 
um, because not only is it just essential to be creative, but with this new stuff and all the fills I'm throwing in, it's going to come together very smoothly and very nicely, not just be fast. Mm -hmm. When you can throw in something technical that's fast, it just like blows you out of the water. And uh, that's kind of what I want to give people when they listen to it. Yep. And also for myself, I just want to be, you know, up to speed on them and yep. tight and play it well, not just playing it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the rudiments is a really interesting part of that. And I just saw a video of uh, Maddie, the drummer of Currents, yeah. uh, was posting videos of like him and his drum teacher going through rudiments together. And it really yeah. stuck out to me. It was like, if I am Maddie, I am posting covers or not covers, I'm playthroughs of current songs. I'm yeah. posting the most complicated currents thing. And to post that process, I thought was really interesting, both in like him as a person is like, yeah, I want to show you the hard work that I put in. Yeah. And also it really highlighted to me how hard that work is to do. Where like if he was posting something that was like very basic, he wouldn't have posted it, right? Like he was yeah. posting it because he thought it was challenging and impressive for people to see. And that mm. stood out to me as like, I don't know, rudiments always seemed like a like a warm up activity. They never seemed like the the bulk of an activity to me. Yeah. And so it really underscored like, oh, if that is the amount of care he's putting into this, especially where currents are right now. Yeah. If he is still looking at rudiments, then like Okay, I misunderstood these things yeah. and how important they are. Yeah, and they come into play, you know, they're so convenient to pull yeah. out. Um, actually, in the song No Escape, that f crazy fill I do before mm -hmm. it goes in the break, I learned that from one of Luke Collins' YouTube lessons. It's just like a six-stroke roll okay. inverted onto everything. And he just did a little lesson. He goes, yeah, like, use this with whatever. This is fun to play. And it just happened to come out in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's cool that I just pulled it out there yeah. because it's something, you know. And that's what I'm trying to do more. Whereas if I were to just pull something out of nowhere, it's something really intricate that I've practiced mm -hmm. and it just fit. Yeah. It feels natural, yep. you know. Hell yes. Yeah, that's wise, wise advice. And I'm trying to think of what my own equivalent of rudiments are that I should be getting back to. But I'm I'm sure there's one. I'm sure yeah. there is some basic step. Not there's basic, a lot. There is some... Uh, foundational step that I'm overlooking that probably, yeah, would be worth returning to. And I'm not sure what that is, but I'll, I'll figure it out later and <laughs> apply it to myself. Uh, and then my last question for you is, what are you doing outside of music? So we spent a ton of time talking about you <laughs> yeah. as a drummer. Uh, and of course, the drumming is, yeah, like videos to me, it is a huge part of us, but yeah. certainly not all of us. Mm -hmm. Are there other interests outside of this? Are you climbing rocks? Are you sewing? <laughs> <to> <laughs> <go> <laughs> <there>? <laughs> initial question. Uh, yeah, what are you doing outside of this that is, yeah, not music related, but also part of Frankie? Yeah, um, so... <clears throat> I'm a huge nerd in both like uh, scary movies, Marvel, DC, all okay. of that. Uh, grew up a comic book kid. Um, in fact, tonight I'm going to see Deadpool with my cousin. Hell yes. Um, Have you seen it yet? Or, no, or, not okay. yet. First time. So, so, I'm so upset. Some things got spoiled, but I heard in the grand scheme of the movie, it's not really anything. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but um, I'm big into exercise, nutrition. Um, I've recently been, you know, doing a lot of, uh, cooking with like single ingredient foods. I love doing that. I feel like a wizard opening like a cookbook or making teas and, yep. you know, all that stuff. Yep. Uh, huge coffee drinker. I will go to any coffee shop, uh, that's around just yep. to try it. Um, that's one of the things me and, uh, Clay would do when we went on tour and when I'd go and visit, um, he's also a coffee nerd in that. Um, but I just like my death wish. It's consistent. It's, you know, gives me the buzz to keep going. And for the stuff I play, yep. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So I'm a huge into, uh, you know, fitness exercise. Um, you know, I recently got into, you know, uh, different styles of eating, if that makes sense. Okay. You know, uh, like carnivore stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not to the extreme extent. I just like the idea of, you know, being creative with very minimal amounts of food, mm -hmm. you know, very single ingredients, grown stuff, your own, going to a farm, getting raw milk, you yep. know, stuff like that. You mentioned you grew up like outdoorsy. Is that related yeah. to farm stuff? Is that like kind of coming full circle here? Yeah. I used to want to be a wildlife biologist. Hell yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I was, I was a nerd. I was an Envirothon. Um, what is an Envirothon? It's like, exactly. <laughs> I feel like what I stumbled it, exactly, into here. Yeah, exactly what it sounds like. Um, you just go and it's like the math Olympics. Remember that when you were in high school? I don't know if I do, but I yeah. can. I can. It's like that, it but is. with like uh, you know nature and like tree identification. That was my strong suit. Tree identification. Okay. I wanted to work for a state park and like 
identify invasive species of trees, rip them out, and replant all the native species. Because okay. a lot of times the um, invasive that you know Europeans brought over, they had no clue what they were doing, sure. and now it just like drowns out all the natural stuff. Yes. Um, so yeah, which there's still a passion for that. Actually, there's um, you know, that's one of the things I've really been enjoying Promark sticks lately. But that's one of the things that they do. They work with, uh, you know, for every tree they chop down, they plant like five more to, and they go after like the, I don't know if it's true, they go after the invasive species and stuff or whatever, mm-hmm. but that's just really cool to me. That's, I always like that. I like hiking and uh, camping, all that. You mentioned the uh, tree identification. And my next question, <sighs> you kind of alluded to it with the drumsticks then. Are you super into like the shells and the materials that your shells very, are made of? And like, very. I feel like you, like I, I'm, is it mahogany is one of the woods that people are often yeah. talking about? And I feel like you would take it to the next step of like, well, it's a, a Japanese mahogany. So yeah. it's different than a... So I am huge on that stuff. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I wish I got my hands on was the bubinga birch before it was discontinued Bubinga by Tama. birch. Yeah. That is the best name ever. I don't know yeah. what it is, but I need 10 of it's them. It's like an African birch tree that okay. they had to discontinue because they're like, we are chopping down way too many of these and... There's going to be none left. If Good we continue. for them for uh, that so line they, of sand. Yeah, yeah. Tom is a cool company. Um, they come out with really creative shells. Uh, SJC is another one of my favorites that I've just listened to, and they're like they sound awesome. Um, but I'm very into not only the shell configurations, but also with sticks. Um, I've been going trying all these different sticks, whether it's maple, whether it's hickory. Um, the diameter, the yep. how fast it tapers, the feel it has, everything. I'm just such I, a nerd on all of that. I didn't realize how diverse drumsticks were until I got my e kit and I was looking yeah. into them. And it was like, I just want to buy drumsticks. I don't know what yeah. these, <laughs> what are all these letters and like, yeah. just give me drumsticks. I don't care yeah. about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it can be like almost overwhelming. I remember <laughs> was, when I yeah. started, they're like, oh well, what are you looking for? We have this, 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 and yeah. I'm like. Uh, something that won't <laughs> break easy. <laughs> I was looking for them and I was going to order off Amazon and then they were going to take a couple days to ship. And I was like, no, nah, I want to play now. Yeah. So I walked into a music store up the street uh, and I expected to just go buy drumsticks and I get there. And of course it's the whole rack. With yeah. all, and I was like, okay, I, I'll yeah. go back to Amazon. Like, I don't know how to read this. Yeah. I don't know how to make any sense of all this stuff that I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, and I guess I should have been brave and asked the store employee, but I just didn't have, <laughs> didn't have yeah. it in me at the time. My current favorites, if you want to try them out, uh, the Winston rock stick, okay. they're from Sweden. So it takes a while to, you know, with the shipping and stuff. Sure. Um, the Vader 55 double B. Okay. They're like a five B similar to, probably what you have there um they're just a little bit longer okay and i I love how vader makes their sticks they make them very strong and then promark like i said just the they have a raw stick and it's got no texture on it whatsoever it's just wood and i just like the way it feels i would uh i would uh not really here i would like to get like a raw finished table here that is one of my like yeah my like mecca items here it's almost like comfort yeah. A comforting. It yes. Feels like. and yeah. It ultimately hasn't been worth spending $400 on a table to yeah. use once a week for a decoration. That's, like that's it, fair enough. it seems yeah. insane. But like if, yeah, if I ever am doing well, you'll know, cause you'll see a new table yeah. here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to all the configurations mm-hmm. and stuff. <clears throat> the only reason why I haven't gotten a new kit yet. Well, you know, there's financial aspect, but also it's, I want to be able to hear everything because mm-hmm. it could sound different based off of, any configuration you go with. Yeah. One thing that I've also been looking into is, uh, you know, that caught my eye. SJC does an acrylic kit, but it's black acrylic. Okay. And I'm like, I want to hear that because that just looks so sick. Yep. But yeah, super nerd on, you know, it transfers from all the Marvel and horror stuff into the drumming world. I just hyper obsess and get real nitpicky with it. Okay. What's yeah. the what's the best Marvel movie in the last decade that's come out? Ooh. What's, what's like or maybe not the one, but like what is what is your personal favorite? What is the one that stands out to you as like yeah. There's two. Okay. And I would say Winter Soldier. Okay. Cuz that is just, you know. Well, for preface, I'm half asking yeah. you here because I haven't seen any yeah. of them. The first so the like, first yeah, Iron, one or two to The first about. Iron Man is one of the best movies period. Okay. Um and as for Marvel and like, you know, uh, what Marvel should be, Winter Soldier and Iron Man are just—it's awesome. Okay, they're dramatic. They're um, 
you know, serious, but they have jokes here and there. I don't like the overly goofy. Yes. Like the Thor movies. I love Thor as a character. And Chris Hemsworth is the perfect character for it. But even he was like, this character is not serious anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But my personal favorite is No Way Home because okay. I was a huge Spider-Man fan is growing the, up. That's not the animated one, is it? No, that's into Spider-Verse, which there is also phenomenal. That one I did see. Um. <laughs> yeah. Those, those are probably the... For Spider-Man fans, those are probably the best. I don't want to say the best movies because Spider-Man Two exists, but <laughs> um, they're like some of the best Spider-Man material for modern okay. eyes. Okay. Yeah, and I hung out with Tom Holland briefly, cool. and he's just such a cool. Where dude. was that? I ran into him in Times Square. <laughs> it was just like the Why most would he random go to Times Square. I don't know. Like that's what I was. <laughs> I was there uh, with a group of friends, and at first I wasn't going to bother him. Yeah. And then my friend Caleb just has no, you know, concept of I shouldn't do this. He goes, yo, Tom. And like the whole store just turns around. Of course. Yeah. But he was the nicest guy ever. And then he went out and just waited outside of the store we were in. And I'm like, you guys are weird stalking them. I had my moment. Let me go get coffee. Mm -hmm. And me and Caleb were getting coffee and his phone rings. He goes, yeah, no, he's getting coffee. He's right here. He goes, what? And then just runs out. I'm like, where are you going? He comes back in and he goes, dude, Tom Holland just asked for you by name <laughs> and runs out. I'm like, well, why weren't you going to tell me? <laughs> and um, so he, uh, I meet him again. He's like, oh, I think I just thought you were pretty cool. I'm going to give you a shout out on my Instagram. And I was on his story and he gave me a shout out. He's just the nicest guy. Interesting. And for like a whole year and a half, I was known as the Tom Holland guy. <laughs> I just you have these. Many I, lives. Yeah, yeah, I have these random experiences that are just. I for, I don't know. It's just another day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out how to tie that all together. I'm. I, I'm trying to figure out how to tie the environmentalism and your drums together. And I. I feel like it's like going out and finding your own tree and making your own kit out of it or something. That like, would be cool. That would be super an DIY hands on. Yeah. I. I would love to go to one of the uh, stick factories and see how they do everything. You know, whether it's, you know, my top two right now, like I said, are Vader uh, or three, Vader, Winston, and Promark. Uh, Promark is a lot more into the environmental side. I would love to go see, you know, how they do everything and the whole process of that. Um, You know, I I love that. And go see them replant the trees that they do, you know. Because I've seen videos, but it's one thing to see it and one thing to experience it. And then turn around and see the other thousand trees that have already been planted. My dream has always been to get a custom stick because I'm so picky and I bounce all the time to get, you know, something specified to my liking that can do a little bit of everything. So yeah, I'd have to say that that kind of ties in with the environmental. It seems possible these days, King. Yeah. So, yes. Hell yes, my man. I appreciate you coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a lot me. of cool stuff happening. Now. Yeah, I'll have to get you back on here once yeah. we can talk about all the other cool stuff that's happening. Yeah, I'd once I can talk about learn it. Learn more about yeah. it all. Yeah, it sounds rad. Uh, for the moment, yes, Frankie, where can people find you on social media? Where can they follow you? Where can they tell you that you did great today, that they want to hire you for drums, whatever it is yeah, they want to um, talk to you about? Yeah. Uh, TikTok and Instagram is the same uh, underscore Frankie, underscore Forbes. You could find me on Facebook. I'm never on there. <laughs> literally, don't find yeah. anyone on Facebook. Liter- literally, yeah. my aunts and uncles are on Facebook. That's why I still have it. Yep. That's it. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, Instagram, TikTok, underscore Frankie, underscore Forbes, or uh, email me, FrankieForbesDrums at Gmail. Beautiful. Yep. Go stream Frankie's music. Go check it all out. Uh, let me know if you want a music video before the end of the year uh, yeah. or if you want one in 2025. I yeah. guess we can start having those conversations now. For sure. Which sucks. I hate booking that far in advance, but it that is what it, it is. that's where life yeah. is. It's a great problem to have. I'm very grateful that's to have true. it. That's true. But it is, yeah, bizarre. Like, I'm so used to being like, next week, let's do it. Yeah. And now it's like, uh, <laughs> maybe not <laughs> yeah. next week. That's but true. Beautiful. We did it today. Uh, yes. Beautiful experience. Thanks for coming on, my man. Yeah, thanks, Ram. We did it. From everyone for episode 75 with Frankie Forbes, mission accomplished.